accept the music? Yes. They pay us with their time. So that's why you will all stand up at the count of three. We'll give him the warmest rock star applause. One, two, three. All right, on your feet. That's like, you know, guys. <laughs> It's a little bit different. Normally we'll do the fireside chat now. That's why I was a little bit uneasy. But he'll do first the keynote that he was supposed to do on how to get back your data, self-sovereignty, and some other complicated words I have forgotten. So please go on and then you invite me on stage. Okay, but um, I will try to, to not to talk about, uh, about technology. I think no, nobody cares a little, a little uh, about technology at all. But how many of you are developers, coders? Alex? Not too many, it always happens the same, but anyway, I, I will try to keep it as simple as possible because uh, in, at some point, um, I hate people, <laughs> a lot. So you, usually I'm speaking to someone and say, no, no, people are stupid and you are people. So um, I hate people because I think basically the system is broken at some point, uh, democracy is broken and every, every time I just look around, many of the things I see that we used to do in our daily lives, it's like we are stupid. Ah, I mean, by the way, I'm people too, so I'm stupid too, but uh, in the way, actually, we deal with something as simple as identity. So identity is it's not a simple word. Everybody is speaking about identity, and I'm not sure people understand what's identity. And probably if I ask you, I will have like different kind of answers, but I can try. What's identity? So we have a philosopher here, okay, great. <laughs> Anybody else? What's identity? Name, rank, and serial number. Why not? Yeah, sure. So anybody else? What's the identity? Who you are or who do you believe you are? Who do you believe you are? I like that one. Um, the truth is that probably it's, we have to do another question, not just what's identity. That's quite hard. So let's start with ownership. Who owns your identity? Your data. Who your data belongs to? So if I ask you again, philosopher, your data. Definitely not you. Definitely not no, you. No. Google, yeah. government, Facebook. So everybody has your data, but everybody. So things like you know, big data and all these trends right now in technology, everybody's speaking so excited about. But so we, we see the results. So if, if I say to you, OK, you know, private data, stolen or not, but misused, and fuck up things happening in the world, do, do you see the relation at some point? I'm not saying Donald, Donald Trump, or maybe yes. Donald Trump is a good example. So how can a, a guy like that be like the president of the United States? And all comes down to a simple thing. It's like, of course, social media, all your data, because yes, you are not you. Your identity is not yours. So who is this identity uh, right now? What, what's this? So probably the, the best answer you can have right now about identity is that identity is business model. Because people is making money with your data, but not you. Definitely not you. So that's something that uh, it's like in a humble kind of way we're trying to solve. So we started with blockchain like I started working uh, coding with blockchain like seven years ago, and I love the technology. And uh, it's been evolving a lot. Since then, of course, we went through, uh, we can speak about that later, about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, um, all that stuff, ICOs, that's fine. But then uh, I think most of the, the, the blockchain community, we found out that we, we have a missing link, and that missing link was identity. So the proposal is quite simple. It's what we call the self-sovereign ID. Have you heard about self-sovereign ID? So the idea is quite simple. It's like, let's get back our data. But how can we get back our data? So that's probably the, the main problem that we're having right now. And uh, I think coming back to Estonia, and uh, it's good that you were speaking about Estonia, because I, I was in Estonia last week speaking about digital identity uh, in a conference with the government of Estonia. And it was not about technology. OK, yes, they had a really amazing technology going on there. OK, they have it. But the, the main change they, they did the success they had. Do you know why it is? Why, why do you think they, they had this huge success and now everybody says Estonia like they are ruling the world? Because 
it's the role model to, to be followed. Why do you think? Trust, trust but how do you uh, get trust? But the, the, the only thing they did different than everybody else, because I've seen better technologies, by the way, and theirs were, was broken. They had really a big bug going on. They had to change around 800,000 cards. Someone tried to do their own crypto, so the usual problem. But I think what they did uh, was education. It sounds stupid, but it makes sense. So probably the, the main thing they did is tell the people that was in Estonia that they could have their digital ID, ID and they, they could be the owners of that digital ID. And that's really, really, really difficult. Think about it, because it's like, okay, do you work with banks? Do you have a bank, bank account? Yes? Do you want to be your own bank? Bitcoin is about that, it's about becoming your own bank. That's why many people in the world has lost a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't because I wrote, I, I wrote the private key in a, in a paper. And I'm not joking. I had the private key written down in the paper at some point. And then, like, I don't know what happened, but my, my phone just was thrown to the sea, an accident, uh, thanks to the paper, <laughs> by the way. But uh, the main thing is, like, you have to become your, your own bank. And not your own bank of money. That's probably dangerous, but becoming your own bank of data, I think that's even more dangerous. So you have to educate. People has to, has to understand exactly what they are doing. Because it's not like, okay, I've lost 1,000 euros. Okay, I'm fucked up. That's bad. But it's like, oh, I, I, I just forgot about my, my key, and now I don't have a life. I think that's even a little bit worse. Don't worry, by the way, we're working on a lot of strategies from the technical perspective. And, and I, it's not about technology, it's about UX. It's about user experience. Technology will help a little bit. But it, everything is about education, because what we're trying to, to build this self-sovereign identity, it's just like that. It's like going to the extremes. It's like all your information. It's on your mobile phone. Everything about you. But when I say everything about you, I mean it. Everything about you. Imagine like having a bank account, but then your bank account, they just have money. But they don't have information about you. Why? Because you have it. You have all your movements your payments, everything you do, you have it here. The consequence, it's, it's amazing. It means that, OK, I've had enough with this bank. I don't like the service. I can change to another bank. I just have to do it. That's it. Once again, it's like uh, the place where I live, my address. I have it here. It means that all the services I'm hiring, like uh, utilities, like Amazon, uh, any e-commerce, all the people in the world that they need to have my, my address feels they will have to ask me, ask me for like the consent, consent to have that, that address. But if I change my address here, that's enough. I can change it everywhere. Everyone will get noticed. We'll get a, like, OK, this guy changing the ad, uh, has changed the address. And they will ask me again. And probably the, the last, but for me, the most important thing, that mm, I don't like the way identity is working right now. I, I think we're doing it wrong. So every time I just go to a place, like, I have to get inside here, or I have to go to a meeting with a bank or whatever. I have to show them my, uh, my identity card, all of it. So basically, it's my name, second name, address, who's my father, who's my mother, the day I was born. So the kind of identity that we are building right now, that we're trying to build, actually, it's not based on data. It's only based on claims. So what we're going to do, basically, is say, OK, I'm over 18. I live in Sitges. Everything that I want people to know, but it will be only a true or false. I will never give up more information about me that I want people to have. Once again, my information is mine. So working with this kind of claims, it's like whenever I got here, I just need to, to have like a token, whatever it is that says that Alex sent me, that I have the right to get into here. I don't have to share my information anymore. And if I want to share it, uh, I can sell it. Why? Because it's mine. Nobody else needs to have that information. And everybody's speaking about the blockchain, like uh, blockchain for everything. Basically, in, in, uh, in this kind of applications, blockchain is just like a DKPI. It, it's a, a storage for the claims. That means no information goes to the blockchain. I will never put any kind of information, name, email, or whatever to the blockchain. The only thing is like, whenever I go to any place, I just can share my information and verify it. This kind of, uh, of identity, it's not uh, given by a government 
to control us or to tax us. That's what they do. It's not given to us uh, by any kind of company like Facebook or Google. Basically, it's I, I do it myself. And whenever I start this kind of identity, it's like, OK, I just put it on the blockchain. Are you going to trust it? So, be honest. No, no way. OK. <laughs> it's like me saying I'm me. Nobody will trust that. But then probably I will go to Alex and say, OK, Alex, can you verify that I'm me? I, I'm me. <laughs> it sounds stupid, but yeah. And then I will go to you and say, oh, if Alex says so, maybe I can trust it. But if then I go just to a bank and the bank says, yes, yes, this guy is Alex, if I go to the government. So it's a reputational, uh, reputational kind of ID. And that's great. We build our own ID. We build our own reputation. It's not based on information people has about us. It's about what we do. And once again, even if it's reputational, it's ours. So even if we have like a really bad reputation, only us we will know. Something like something we keep here. And then I just go there. I can show it. OK, yes, it's me. I can go inside. But then the, the kind of future that opens up this kind of technology for not only for people, but for business, the startups, companies, for hiring, for onboarding, uh, everything can be digital. But it changes the whole game. It goes from everybody has in, having information about me or the other way around, me having all the information and, and picking choosing who to share this information with. Time? Yeah? Two minutes. Great. You can make questions. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. No pressure. Yeah. You can make questions, by the way. <laughs> but then if you put all of this together, like imagine <clears throat> having this digital ID for a freelance. I have my digital ID with all my claims. So whenever I just go to work for any kind of client, I can, this is my claims. So all of these other clients say they're happy with me. They will trust me. And I can say, no, no, I have a bank account. They will trust me. I'm up to date with the taxes. No, that's right. That's not true. But I can just start working immediately. And then here comes the blockchain, so I can pay with tokens, maybe. That means that every time I, I just do any kind of payment on the blockchain, I can link this payment to all this information. So basically, just in, in, in the moment I'm paying, maybe with my phone number, I can share my, all my identity so they can issue an invoice. And then this invoice goes linked to the payment. Once again, this, this changes everything. Imagine that, like as an entrepreneur, how many of you are entrepreneurs? A lot of you. Imagine you don't have to just do taxes anymore, ever again. Because every time you pay, taxes, they just go there. You don't have to care. You will always go by the law, because you don't have to care. It's on the blockchain. Why? Because you have this digital ID that can be shared. But that's the difference. Right now, the, the way that we work, we're working, as, as I say, it's broken. We have a, a, different, a different digital ID for every service we use. Every time we log into a different place, we create a new identity. What we are proposing is let's change that. Let's try it the other way around. So let's have only one identity. It's us. I think it's, it's the United Nations. They say that everyone should have a digital ID by 2030, I think. The truth is that today, uh, around 1.2 billion people in the world, they don't have identity. I'm not saying digital. They just don't have identity. It's 1.2 billion. So that's what we're doing. Uh, everything that we're doing like in, in our company, it's like most of the things are open source. This kind of digital ID, it only works if everybody just jump in and start using it. And the main thing about that is that uh, probably it's, it's one of the things that like a lot of people hate us. Uh, a lot, by the way. It's because there's no, no business model. We are not charging for the service. We're just building open source everybody can use. So you can start building your identity for you, your company. Not only that, your car. We are working on a project actually building the, the digital ID of the car. We're already doing that. So whenever I pass the toll, I can just prove that my car is electric and I get a discount, these kind of things. We're we, we already doing that, those kind of things. But please. This digital identity is yours. You don't have to pay for your identity. It's like paying for your hair. It just grows. You have to sell it. It's not from anybody else. So I, I know it's probably this is the, most, the worst comparison I've ever made. <laughs> Com <laughs> comparing. <laughs> yeah, boo <-hoo. laughs> Yeah, there's people with more identity than other people. Why is it? Well, I don't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please.
Now we can get it. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Alex, for the presentation. I wanted to give a little bit of background because you know these concepts are really difficult, even for developers, right? Some, I mean, some developers might not be acquainted with some, some of the terminology we'll be talking about, and that's probably the most technical event we'll have so far. So before delving into the future, because you were mentioning some things that were really interesting about self-sovereignty and having your own ID, I want to talk about the present. Sure. Because we did an event with you in January, not Startup Grind, and a lot of people sign up. It sold out in about like four hours because it was cryptos, how to invest and how to develop in cryptocurrencies in January when they were like the best thing ever. And now for this event, it was kind of like more slow. Obviously, a lot of people lost a lot of mon money in the process. So I want to say the title of the event is what the fuck is happening with cryptos and blockchain? So maybe that's the first question I should pose. So it's, it's basically money versus knowledge. All right. What does that mean? So basically, you're saying that, OK, two events. Yeah. One is free money, and the other one is free knowledge. Guess why everybody was on the free money? Because you were <laughs> learning about how to invest. In, you know, yes, yeah. uh, basically, uh, we, we, we've seen it for the last five years. A lot of people are really interested on, 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 the, on the cryptocurrency side, not yeah. worrying too much about the technology underneath, and not yeah. understanding the change that, that was uh, happening with this technology. And I'm not saying I'm against crypto, by the way. I work with a lot of you know, banks, big companies, and all of them, they hate crypto. They yeah. are the hell out of scared. Yes. They hate it. I, I, love, I love Bitcoin. I love what, what it takes. It's basically, blockchain technology is amazing. Uh, it's a big step towards decentralization, so that's fine. Uh, Bitcoin, it's like a new financial system by default. That's why banks don't like you. No, no, they like me. I, well, I, now. I'm not sure if they like me. <laughs> not really like sure. It's like they want to have me, just, just in case. Exactly. Yeah. So that brings me to my, to my next question, which is, um, you know, first they try to block you, then they despise you, and then they start accepting you, and then they make fun of you, and then eventually you win, right? Is that the, what is happening also with blockchain? Because yeah, I'm gonna we're win. not going to talk too much about like, cryptos. Maybe we'll focus more on blockchain, right? I'm so going to win. Really? You're going to win? I'm losing, by the way. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> so what... what Chains have you perceived in the last year or so in the industry? Because since that event I was talking about in the beginning, it's been like three, four years. Mm. Maybe it's too much time, but in the yeah. last year. Uh, a, a big invasion. Um, I, I, I've asked you how many of you are entrepreneurs. How many of you are corporate people? How many of you work in big corporations? Oh, wow. You, you've got big, some, big ones, some you know, spies. big corporations. OK, you can leave the room, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do like this. Uh, what I've seen is like, uh, yes. No stereotypes, right? Yeah, yeah. no stereotypes. There's a, there's a lot of, of inter-entrepreneurs that people inside of these companies actually fighting there. And my respect to them because yeah. their job is far worse than mine. But the truth is like what happened is like all of the community was building this blockchain. Mm -hmm. We were a lot of people building it, making it open source. Like, okay, this is great with changing the world. Until all of these big companies, they started company coming to, to the place. And uh, what we've seen is that they're just kicking us out. They're just taking our places and taking our technology, saying it's their technology. They built it. They made it. They did everything. And they, they are forgetting about, um, about the community. In that sense, I think community was some, something developers, I mean, startups, developers, the community of developers, people making open source was invisible to them. Mm -hmm. They didn't care. They didn't, they didn't even know they, they, it existed. They didn't even know the word open source. And probably right now they are really afraid of it because they, they are really attacking us. They are going against, against all the community. Every time I see a lot of emails about, you know, corporate emails, they start like, every time it's like the community, you know, quoting the Alex communities, it's that. And all these kind of things. And probably they are really scared, but they are doing a lot of, uh, we're missing a big opportunity. There's the, all the community of developers that they're doing an amazing technology, and I think they are really better technology that cooperates. Mm -hmm. But then there's all these big companies that they know how to reach the users. They know how to do UX. They, they can just get something and make it big. Mm -hmm. But both sides are like, no, oh, I don't want to work with corporates, and the other way around, now oh, the community, they don't know how to do technology. And we are missing this. So do you think there will not be any sort of breakthrough precisely because there's not a meeting between these two parts? So when they will meet and they will accept and acknowledge each other and respect, there will be finally the 
general acceptation of blockchain as a technology? Yes, and, uh, and I'm, I'm afraid it, it won't happen, at least not this year, not next year. What I'm seeing, by the way, if you go to any kind of, of, of big blockchain event, you will see a lot of people from big companies like Accenture, Santander, all these kind of big companies. And I know them personally. Probably I, I, I teach them blockchain like uh, a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And yes, they understand it, of course, and probably they are good at it. But where is all the developers? I've been to many technologies. The last time I was in, uh, in, a, in, a, in a conference with 300 people, 400 people. Mm -hmm. I don't know, a lot of people. It's like, it was a bigger room than this, full, yeah. completely. But not bigger than our conference, you mean? Nah, no, not really. no way. Yeah. But the truth is, that I, I asked the same question. Like, How many of you really interested in blockchain are developers? Yeah. Two. And one was me, by the way. Why do you think it's that? It should be like, it's a technical challenge and developers are intrinsically motivated by challenges. The and developers in the room, how many of you can do blockchain? Great, so I'm going to interview you next month. So you got October 12th, no? <laughs> there are three, and, and, three of and, them. And some of them are my team, so. All right, 100% <laughs> on your team. We didn't pay them to come, but by the no. way, yeah. <laughs> we, say, we just say preview and all of them. Why do you think that happens? I mean, I don't know. It's we're always change. motivated as developers by like the latest framework, the latest tools, this continuous integration, blah, blah. And then comes blockchain. It should be like really interesting, but maybe there's too much business in it? No, it's not too much business. Uh, the truth is that it's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's frustrating. I, when I started learning about blockchain, and I know many blockchain developers, all of them, they say, no, no, I understand blockchain. What the, what the fuck? I, when I started lear learning blockchain, I was so frustrated for months, mm -hmm. literally. Well, okay, that at that time, we didn't have any kind of YouTube video with tutorials. There's yeah. no, there was no documentation, but it, it's, it's really hard. It's not just like a new way of, an, an, a new language. It's a new way of developing. Yeah. So we are used to a centralized way, mm -hmm. and now we are working in a decentralized way. So it's not like a back end and a front end. It changes like everything. And then it's not enough like, okay, I can develop. No, I have to learn about cryptography. Now we have to learn about crypto economy. We have to learn about so many things. Mm -hmm. Like I have so many meetings with lawyers that lately I start understanding even regulation. It's frustrating. It's so hard that a lot of people, they just try and they give up. But probably that will change. So there are a lot of schools right now teaching, like uh, we are doing a master with uh, the OPC mm -hmm. here, just for blockchain and for tech. For the guys, so I hope this is going to change. They say that a technology really gets accepted in the market or really makes it to the 100% of the market when there is a niche, a vertical that adopts it as a lifesaver, right? Let's say if AR or VR were really critical to surgery, to laser surgery, open heart surgery, things like that, then it eventually makes the breakthrough to going to 100% of the market. Sometimes it's been porn, you know, sometimes it's medicine, sometimes it's porn. But really, when a market completely adopts the technology, then there's it allows you to go, to go to go the, to the broader market. What do you think it will be the case in blockchain? There's a cryptocurrency for porn, by the way. There's a cryptocurrency for dogs as well, right? There's doggy coins. For coin, bullets. Right? And for, for bullets. For bullets as well. Yes, you can right. shoot anyone, and then it, it's like a token, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So does he keep the token, uh, even if he dies? I, 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 <laughs> if you shoot me, probably I won't. I don't want to give you back. Not going shoot you. Not on stage. <laughs> 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 All right. So, yeah. So back to the question, what, what industry do you think is going to be the one that absorbs and allows blockchain to become it should, the broader? But it should not be a, an industry. It should be a, like a big change in society. Yeah. But, but that, that starts with people. It's, it, and, and, and once again, I think it's digital ID. Once we have yep. a self sovereign ID, all the services that we, we can build on top. We're working with a lot of big companies, by the way, mm -hmm. and startups too, and we have uh, clients all around the world. Mm -hmm. And we have different kind of, you know, there's a lot of people working on the uh, on utilities, like electricity is uh, mm -hmm. next week, mix change. I don't think finance, by the way. No? So no banking industry? Uh, most of the banking people I know, they love blockchain. They are, they are just to but stop But they don't it. know why? No, they want to stop it. All right, yeah, yeah. Insurance, maybe? Uh, insurance, it's, they, they, they trust too much their legacy. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult for them to change anything at all. And basically, blockchain allows people to disintermediate. Yeah. And an insurance company, actually, it's, it's a big... I can do an insurance product in a smart contract in less than an hour. Yeah. That's what I told to the CEO of Zurich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He hates me, too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it, it, you can change exact a, a lot of things. It, it opens up a lot of 
you know, doors to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and new projects to just come there. The barrier right now was like up here, now it's down here. Because like, for example, with the self sovereign ID, you don't have to care about KYC. Mm -hmm. You can have this, this claim from a bank. So once you get into any kind of FinTech, you can show your claim and then no KYC. So the FinTech can do it without any kind of KYC. All the barriers get so low that it opens up a new, a new, uh, a new horizon for, uh, for innovation. But the, the only way to get there is by all these big companies allowing this to happen. Uh, oh, yeah, maybe you KYC. KYC. Uh, know your client. Basically, whenever you, oh, yeah. you do the boarding on a bank, actually, they do a lot of, of investigation about you. And that's the KYC, know your client. They have to do, by the way, they, they have, it's, it's a regulation. Mm -hmm. And it's like $50 like each, each time they have to investigate one of the clients. And just because the government tells them to do it. And I wanted to ask, like, what role have got startups in this? Because one of the things that maybe we as developers cannot single-handedly change the wall, right? It takes a certain kind of person, but usually that Satoshi doesn't Nakamoto happen. did. Some people there, <laughs> yeah, exactly, and the creators But we are not, of, okay, okay, we're not Satoshi yeah, Nakamoto, yeah. There's not we a lot of them. That. There's certainly not a lot of them. But, and the corporates are not going to lead the change. They might accompany the communities to lead the change. But startups, they're raising tons and tons of money, and startups are good at building community around them, and evangelists and followers and early adopters. So do you think that blockchain-based startups can actually lead change for blockchain to, for a bigger adoption? It will, eventually. Uh, whenever, once again, it's like free money, free technology, or free knowledge. Yeah. At this point, most of the startups, they are focusing on the free money side. Mm -hmm. I, I am not really a fan of, of ICOs. Not yeah. all of them are really We'll get good. into that, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not, not, not big fan, because most of the people is using blockchain technology just to get money. Free money, by the way, because they're they not you know, obligated to, to anything at all. Yeah. So once uh, all these developers, they just focus on solving problems. Mm -hmm. I have this problem all the time with most of the companies we work with, that they just come to me and say, how can I use blockchain? It's like, I don't know. That was my next question. Then they come to me, it's like, how can I use blockchain? Ah, yeah. No fucking idea. So most <laughs> of the companies, I take it, I've heard this from, from other consultancies, right? It's a, Big consult, a big company comes to them and they're like, yeah, we want to do blockchain, blockchain. all the things, right? Yeah. And, and they don't even have a fucking API in place, right? So how often do you find that this is happening, that the companies are not ready for the technology itself? Because they don't, they don't know what they want, but they don't even know what they have. Yeah, mo most of the times, and, and it's like, first, the, the companies, some of them, they, they don't even have digital processes. Yeah. So uh, they have to go through digitalization first and like, uh, no, how are you doing that? With paper, by the way. Yeah. We have someone reading the XML file. And I'm not joking. We have someone reading the XML file and changing the Excel. Yeah. All right. So uh, can, can you do blockchain on paper? <laughs> yes. I've heard someone, <laughs> somebody did it. Even mining. You can do it. It's not fast, but. <laughs> no, it might not be very fast. Yeah. You're not going <laughs> to make money with that. Buddy. I can see that. No, no, no. So but the, the truth yeah. is like, um, I, I don't know. Well, probably it's like, most of the consultancies, the consultors, it's like they have to sell. Yeah. I, I'm not a consultant. Yeah. I, I don't sell. I solve problems. So basically, it's like I change your question. If you come to me saying, OK, I need blockchain, I'm not your man. Yeah. If you come to me, it's like I have this problem, and I think blockchain is a fit, then we can talk. And I can just take a look into your problem and see the process behind that. Because most of the things we do with blockchain are processes and, and digital ID, mm -hmm. most of the things. But then we're solving problems because they, 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 they are struggling with something between three companies that they don't know how to solve. And then we can just go and, and solve that problem. But I, I don't like this kind of, I need a blockchain, put a blockchain on. Yeah. And all the consultancies, they say, no, I can give you a blockchain. Yeah. So it's like they are speaking to themselves. And then at the end of the day, after spending a lot of money, they just come to me. It's like, OK, we've been spending a lot of money. And <laughs> we still don't have a solution. And they need the blockchain. No, they need to have a problem. Yeah. Technology uh, solves problem, but you don't, it's not something that you just throw. But maybe if they didn't come to you and they didn't say, hey, I need the blockchain, you wouldn't go in and see the real problem, right? Is that a catalyzer to, in order to, you know, to but, manage but this? That's, uh, there's no way I can see the real problem. Yeah. I, I've been to many really big companies, you know, CEOs mm. of the top companies in Spain. And yeah. No way I can understand 
their business, their mm -hmm. companies. So th it's like companies with 5,000 people. Mm -hmm. No way I can know their problems. It's, it's like it takes a life to understand these companies inside. It takes a, a whole life to understand the, their business. They can find the problem. Not, mm -hmm. not me. Once, once I tell them the, the technology, they can start like firing problems they have. And I say, okay, no, 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 yes. And how, how about, because there's a lot of hype, and one of the things I wanted to do in this event is also dispel a little bit the hype that there is around the blockchain and cryptos industry, right? Because it seems like I myself go to events and where the people who are speaking at the event know jack shit about blockchain. I was like, I'm really disappointed, right? I'm even more disappointed by the events who invite me to speak about blockchain because I don't know anything <laughs> about blockchain. I was like, I want you to talk about blockchain. It's like, I don't know. Like, I don't know about flying cars either, so just don't invite me. So what I want to say, what percentage of the events, communities, or even projects that are being done nowadays are pure smoke? I, I get invited probably to five conferences a day. And about I, blockchain? About blockchain, yeah. yeah. Uh, some about artificial inter uh, AI and different things, but most about blockchain. And, and I have to say no, because I'm too busy building fucking things, right? Yeah, doing things. <laughs> yeah. And I have to do things. Yeah. So if you see like someone is going around to all the conferences speaking about blockchain, probably they don't know blockchain. As I said, it was really fucking hard to learn to code in blockchain. And it's even worse trying to keep up with all the changes and all the things happening today. We are learning about cryptography. We're learning about scaling. We're learning about uh, many things. Like it's, it's, it's so hard. It's frustrating. It's so like every time I, I just understand something, okay, I want to understand this technology, I get it. And then I just turn around and there's like five more. And then I have to drink five more beers. So that, that's, I, that's I will, a nice problem to I solve, by the way. I keep confusing myself with my example. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say there's probably a lot of people who are new to the blockchain thing, so this might be a little bit too hard. But maybe we can give them an example of what we can build with blockchain, some projects you're working on. Or even if you're really inspired, can you improvise something you could do with blockchain for our community at Startup Grand Barcelona, knowing that we do a monthly event, that we've got conferences and things like that, so that we can give more you know, meaningful example. For free. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I'm paying you with beer and exposure. And exposure. <laughs> I have too much of those. I don't like it. <laughs> you can go to the supermarket and pay with exposure, right? <laughs> All right. So yeah, so that we can learn about more tangible projects, because everybody talks about uh, Blockchain, but what are you really doing? What are you working on right now? One successful project you've got. But any kind of relation between all of the people here, like, like for example, this kind of thing. It's yeah. like, I'm here, I need something, I need the contact. Yeah, the open mic, yeah. The open mic. So uh, the prototype we, we built, it's, it's just a basic ID application. And then yeah. you just can connect with people. And then you have certification on both sides that you know that you're talking with and then you can add reputation, and then mm -hmm. you can add tickets, and then it's like you can keep adding things on top of that. Yeah. But uh, probably when we, build a, when we talk about blockchain, most of the, the companies get it wrong because they, they do probably the same question you did. It's like, what can you do for me? Yeah. And probably it's like, uh, not for you, but all of you. For the community, right? For the community. Yeah. Blockchain yeah. works when there's a lot of different companies, yeah. uh, association, freelance, whatever, working together. Yeah. If you have a problem inside your company, you can solve it. Go to the IT guide the department and then solve it. But whenever there's collaboration between many people, different people that they don't, they don't have to share trust at all, mm -hmm. then blockchain comes in. Because then it's like, it's, as I said, uh, in blockchain, uh, you solve this problem of having many identities for, not for you, for things like tickets. Mm -hmm. Imagine it, it, it's uh, the, the, oh, I always do the same example. It's like if I have a ticket for, to come here yeah. and I have I have to print it, I cannot go, I just make a picture and give it to you. Yeah. Are you sure that I don't have it anymore? Yeah. No way, because in the, inter yeah. in the internet we, we, we have right now, actually, it's, it's, we don't have this capacity of sending value or property. Yeah. We just replicate it many times until this, uh, whatever I have, gets to you. Yeah. In blockchain, it's all the way around. Instead. Me having my ticket, you having a ticket, and she having a ticket, and it's the same ticket. There's only just one ticket, and it's here in the middle of the table so everybody can see it. Mm -hmm. And it's once again public, public, uh, private, and public key, but then I'm the owner, so the only one that can change the state of this beer is me. 
So once you claim it, everybody sees that you have, your, you have claimed it. And right? the only one that can change the ownership of this, it's me. So if yeah. I want to give the, the beer to you, I can just go here, saying right now, you are the owner. Yeah. That means that I cannot use it anymore. All right. Which changes the way we would perceive tickets or even reputation for speakers, right? Because well, that's one of the projects that's going around in the Startup Nine circles is we've got this network in 400 cities, in 125 different countries, and everybody applies to speak at our events. But very rarely we can verify the identity of these people. We don't know anything about them. Normally, when we invite people, it's because we either know you or through referrals, we know you're a great speaker. We've seen you at another event. But how about these people who apply? You know, out of nothing, they say like, hey, I want to speak to your events. It would be great to have some sort of reputational system. Once Could again, that be built with like, blockchain? I can come, just show me, show you my claim. Yeah. Like, I've been speaking in so many conferences. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Because like, I, I could I, write it on my CV, but that's not, that doesn't make it true, It doesn't right? make it true. Yeah. The, the good thing about, about self sovereign ID is, like, it's not what I say. Basically, I, I, I will write, uh, you will write down, okay, this guy is a good speaker. Or, yeah. Don't even, don't, don't even take Alex on stage. Yeah. He's, he's awful. Whatever. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. But you will send that information to me. Yeah. Even you say, okay, he's a good speaker, you will send that information to me, so I will keep it. Yeah. The only thing that I will have is a claim, like a cryptographic proof that you say that. Yeah. So whenever I want to go to any kind of, uh, any different uh, uh, conference, I can show, okay, Alex says, and they can verify your identity. It's like, actually, you're really you. So Startup Grind verifies that Alex is a good speaker. How about, because these reputational things and one of the problems that the big networks bring, you all have used Uber, right? More or less, Uber, Cabify, all these right here in apps or, or Deliveroo, whatever, where you get to rate the people, right? Eventually, you rate people five stars because you don't want to deal with it, or very rarely you give them shit for being five minutes late, right? But isn't that detrimental to the functioning of the system itself? I mean, you're not really giving him objectively the value that he was deserving, right? So how that, does that not apply to the reputation system? Even though you say like, hey, he's a good speaker, but maybe you'll say he's a good speaker, but uh, yeah, you know, because I might, someone else might say it, right? Yes, but as I say, this reputation is it's not public. Whatever you yeah. say about me, it's it will we'll be critic or no. It's I, I will it will be only me seeing that. Yeah. So probably I won't share it with anyone else. Yeah. But at least I cannot say I'm a good speaker if you didn't say so. But most yeah. of this reputation, most of this that, I will be private. It, I I will be the owner of this critics yeah. if it, if it is or whatever it is. But then if if the critic is good, uh, it has to be verified. So it's not like, uh, I'm saying you're good because I don't care because nobody will check that me, I say that. Mm -hmm. No, 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 if you say I'm a good speaker, somebody will check that you said I'm a good speaker. Mm -hmm. So be sure to, to be right about that because otherwise uh, someone will call you, Alex, why did you say Alex was a good speaker? Yeah, I know. He's talking about hair. <laughs> <laughs> Making jokes about both people, we don't do Beers, that. Sharp, right? Saying right? people yeah. stupid. Yeah, and, I know. And I wanted to ask, because you briefly mentioned it, and I really wanted to go with it, because probably people have heard what an ICO is, right? You don't know what an ICO is? Just raise your hand. Initial coin offering. All right. So you can explain a little bit what it is, and then I won't make a really hard question about it. If you can explain what an ICO is. For the okay, I want to build a blockchain. Uh, I just print tickets saying, uh, I will give you uh, uh, something from my startup in the future. Probably. <laughs> and then Maybe. I say, no, and this paper is worth $2, so pay me a lot of money. And, and then maybe one day I, will, I build it or not. So that's most of the ICOs. At the beginning, it was great because it was people actually building amazing technology people needed. So there are some ICOs that, that are open source. You yeah. don't expect to get any money back, but you, you need that technology. You want that technology to, to happen, so you pay that. But then uh, a lot of people is saying, okay, I will sell, um, I'm doing a service, so I will sell you uh, tickets to use my service in the future. So pay me now for my future service. It's kind of like service. a crowdfunding. It's kind of. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, but it's, uh, most of the time it's a scam. Yeah. At the office, we there. like to, to pay, <laughs> to buy all the shit coins in the world. Even they did, some, uh, they did uh, an, an useless shit coin and yeah. they raised $200,000. Um, yes, I remember that. There was a website, it's like shitcoin. It's like, this is a total scam. It says, we'll use your money for beer or something like that. And people fucking they bought it. They raised $200,000. Right? Yeah. 
in like a matter of minutes or hours, right? Because it went viral, and obviously and we are all like that. Yeah, but, but, but imagine like I go to a VC. Yeah. And say, okay, I have a startup. Give me five million, please. Yeah. Why? Because in the future, I will build something amazing. And can you prove it? No. Yeah. Do you give me shares? No. <laughs> <laughs> At least a contract, something. No, 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 no. How did that Trust work me. in the first place? So that, my question was, how did that work in the first because place? Because probably the, the first ICO was Ethereum. And yeah. There was a lot of ICOs mm. that, that actually turned out to be amazing. So a lot of people yeah. made a lot of money at the beginning. If you bought uh, Ether at the beginning, it was around a few dollars, yeah. even less. Yeah. Bitcoin, uh, I bought Bitcoin at less than $100. Yeah. I sold it at 300 thinking I'm smart. Yes. <laughs> I bought it the day before it crashed. So okay. I thought I was smart. <laughs> I'm outsmarting you. No. <laughs> I, I paid in a restaurant in Indonesia, like paying with, uh, with Bitcoin. Oh, and, right. and it was like, I'm cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow, look, look how, and how then cool it I am. That it's rippled. It's around seven thousand dollars, which cost me the yeah. <laughs> the dinner <laughs> at right, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fundamental <laughs> problem with ICOs, and I wanted to go here, is that not even a year ago they were booming, they were everywhere. People became overnight millionaires in currencies that are not accepted anywhere, right? And so you cannot cash them out. So they are theoretical millionaires. Yeah. And so these, I don't remember the name of the investor. I think it was Paul Graham and and in the US, and he said, like, I'm having coffee with all these millionaires with ICOs and all of that. They cannot pay for the coffee because obviously they don't have real money. So where are the ICOs now, and what future can you expect of them? So I, I think the ICO, it's, it's not a bad idea by itself. So it's a good way of, of funding a company. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's like if I build something you, you want to use in the future, yeah. then I can say, OK, I will, I will sell you my product in the future in discount. It's like a Kickstarter. Yeah. So probably it makes a lot of sense, but it needs regulation at some point. It's yeah. like, I, if I just buy the service, I want to know that you will build it at yeah. least, or your, I will get my money back. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of countries right now working on the regulation of, uh, but most of them, they are doing it wrong because they don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to tokens, the, the ICO, it's like you buy tokens. There are two kinds of tokens, utilities and securities. Mm -hmm. Utility, it's like buying the service in the future. Yeah. That's fine. I'm this, I know uh, you will build an API, and each one of these tokens will be a call to this API. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Or each one of these tokens will be one gigabyte of storage in your USB drive or whatever. Yeah, That's sort fine. of a voucher. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then the security, the security it's like uh, there's a profit there. It's like I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to speculate. It's, it's like a financial product. Yeah. It's not bad. It doesn't have to be bad. Yeah. But it's there. Yeah. The main thing is like if you speak to the regulator, and that happened to me. They say, no, for us, everything is a security. I say, what? Well, even a ticket to a concert. Because you're, you're buying the, a ticket to a concert to Coldplay, and probably in three months, this ticket will cost three times uh, mm -hmm. what you pay for it. So it's a security. It's a financial product. I say, no, no, it's a fucking ticket. <laughs> <laughs> you can call it like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll go into the last part of the interview. I want to ask you some really quick questions. You give me short answers. Uh, First of all, let's start. There's a bunch. Of, raise your hand if you're a student, because tonight we've got an amazing group of people from Harvard Space. Great. So if you were a student again today, would you become a, be a developer again? Yes. Would you do an ICO? No. Would you go into blockchain? Yes. What would you build with hair. blockchain? No. <laughs> <laughs> you have got hair. Just graying out, but you've got it's it. Here. <laughs> Stop making, people, uh, making fun of people who are balding. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, What would you build with the blockchain nowadays if it were your project? Uh, international uh, bank. Perfect. What's the, the most expensive mistake you've ever done? Becoming a human. <laughs> I didn't see this one coming. <laughs> Do you see peaks? They have an orgasm that takes 30 minutes. That, that's a myth. You it know lasts what? 30 minutes. Uh, that's a myth. <laughs> No, you you, should, true, see, you should see Mythbusters. It's really good. All right. I don't um, want to see that one. <laughs> not, not that really. one. Not that one. One to the last. Um, so building Kalum Labs right now, what was the, the most difficult moment? Building Kalum Labs, like finding the people, always. I, I don't think there's a difference with all these companies, like finding talent. It's like getting to the point that you need a lot of people because you're building something great. You have a lot of clients, interesting projects, and you don't have the, the, the people to build it. So, 
I know the answer to this, but how do you find a perfect partner for your company? You have to marry her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's there, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, that, that's one of the questions we always do. Like, hey, creating companies with friends, family, uh, they should do it, yes or no? Uh, no. Ah, OK, uh, you're supposed to say yes, though. OK, yes. <laughs> Hair. Yeah. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, one thing that we can do better in the startup ecosystem in Barcelona, because we think we are the best, but we're not. What, what can we improve? Stop making bullshit. Yeah, we care. I, I'm, I'm really hard, but most of the people, a lot of people I know, they, they just keep speaking about, uh, about a startup, about how good it is to be an entrepreneur. Being an entrepreneur sucks. Yeah. It's so fucking hard, nobody says it's hard. Everybody says, no, become an entrepreneur, it will change your life. Like most of the entrepreneurs fail. Don't lie to all these guys. It's like, if you want to do it, do it, of course. Not against that, but I've done it many times, by the way, and if I can go to the fuck up nights, like, from now until December. Yeah. But there you go. There. <laughs> if you want me, yeah. I have Boy. a story, like, everybody laughs and I'm crying, you know, and everybody's <laughs> laughing, like, ha, ha, ha. Have you ever cried? <laughs> I was going to ask that. Have you ever <laughs> cried? Many times, of course. Because of a business mistake? Yes. You want to share it or you want to open up now? Or uh, I've done you can go open so up. many of them. Like, it's like we don't have time for that. <laughs> next Thursday, yeah, I can next just Thursday. come and, and share. All right. Of, and, but everybody does. Yeah. And nobody, I, I, that's one of the things I love about the, the Fuck Up Nights. It's like being honest about being an entrepreneur and, and probably celebrating that. It's not bad failing. If you yeah. want to be an entrepreneur and you're ready to fail, uh, most of the time it's like, uh, I, if I ask you how many of you want to be entrepreneurs, usually most of the time they, a lot of people, I've been in many places, everybody's yeah. like, raise their hands. No? How many of you want to be depressed? <laughs> <laughs> or in debt? How many of you want to be divorced? Yeah. <laughs> or eating Broke? Yeah. <laughs> no money at all? <laughs> eating ramen every day for eating ramen. two years? You wish ramen. <laughs> yeah. Rebel. <laughs> So, and, and you see like many of the people like, okay, doesn't sound that good. And then, of course, there's always at the end, the last row, there's someone like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How can we help you or Calum Labs from Startup Grind? We'll be for people. So everybody here, if somebody wants to, to learn, because we, 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 we know that, like learning about blockchain, it's quite difficult. But then what we do is like we teach. We have the, the patience to teach people how to build applications on, blo on blockchain. Yeah. So if you want to understand and you want to build things with blockchain, and we are open. Like, like the CEO is right there. The it, one. It's a she, by the way. The, the she. We have a CEO, my wife there. Yeah, she's hiding, yeah. She's the CTO. <laughs> Ian, last two questions. This one thing, oh, what do you use Microsoft Excel for? <laughs> It's a serious question. It's a serious question. Yeah. For, for like one year and a half or two years, we used to ask it at every event because the first speaker ever said, literally, if I could do presentations, like PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentations on Excel, I would do it, right? He was I, doing like the grocery list on Excel. So I have a template with all the sheet coins I have. Oh, and right. it's connected to CoinMarketCap, so it, it updates itself. And I see all the. That's a good one. I see every time if I, I, I'm making money, or usually it's like I'm losing a lot of money. So it's I, very I red, just right? don't, look it, don't look at it anymore. It's like, the, the yeah, it's a lot of red there. Close it with it, the key, throw yeah, away the key in the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Last but one. At some oh, point, it, I was like, so, wow. It was very green and going like yeah. this, but yeah, not anymore. Good sorry old time. to tell Good you. Good old times, and uh, probably they're not coming back. Well, no, I was going to ask that, but I'm not going to ask it because someone else will. And the last question is, everybody has got a useless superpower, something you do exceptionally well, but it's like, what do I do this for? What I'm is yours? really good at not making money. All right. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yes, give, give it up for Alex. <laughs> All right. Improvise like this fast. It sounds like prepared, but it's not prepared. <laughs> It's totally not I did, prepared. I didn't knew that. We don't prepare things at Star Grind. That's why the events are like <laughs> this. So, please, we're going to open the floor for a couple quick questions because there's a lot of new people in the room. Um, say your name, be very specific, uh, and one question per person, and Don Peach. <laughs> we will <laughs> boo you, and then we'll punch you, and no, just kidding. But just don't do it. <laughs> So n not really understanding blockchain and knowing that the verification is a very important thing to this, being an American, you might tell by the accent, uh, with all like the Russian hacking and, and all of the, the things that went on with false verifications, how does blockchain deal 
with that. Because if I've got a farm of 10,000 programmers that are just creating false IDs and false verifications, how do you get around that? So quick fire answers. In, in, yeah. in two ways. Uh, first, what we're trying to build is a unique ID that's linked to a real people. So there's no way you can build fake IDs. That's, that's first. And second one, it's like linked to the, the first one, is that every time even you log into a web place, uh, even using a WhatsApp, everything that you do in, in blockchain, it gets verified both sides. You verify that, that it's me that you're connecting with, and I'm verifying that it's you I'm connected with. So if you add those two things, like there's no, there should be no way to create fake, uh, fake profiles and try to break into communications and try to start making noise in social networks. Next one. We got a couple here in the front. Otman's the first time he comes. He obviously has got a question. <laughs> He'll come now. Next. Hi, I'm Rafael. I'm, I'm working on unified digital health records, um, so kind of related to this. But I, I need your help to understand, and maybe it's a follow-up to the earlier question. If I have a unique digital ID, right, how does that solve the problem of all of these other data owners creating data sets on me mining that data? How does it solve the problem of Facebook and all of these other players that you talked about at the beginning as being the problem? Yes, because it's about education. Quit Facebook. It's, uh, it's supposed to be quite easy. Anyway, the new regulation, GDPR, have you heard about GDPR? Right now, everybody's talking about GDPR. The new regulation, GDPR, says that everyone that has information about you, you have to give consent about that. So if you just say no, Every time that something pops out and say, no, we need information about you, then it will work. In the digital, in, in the, for example, in, in the, the kind of application we're building, every time you open a new channel, a new channel with, with a new business, like it would be Facebook or, or whatever, even the bank, every time you open a new communication channel with, a, with a, any kind of company and they ask you for information, you can send this information, it's verified, but basically we will ask you two things. It's like, one, the kind of information we want about you, name, email, whatever, and then uh, you have to accept the usage we will do about your information, with your information. So basically, at the point, you will see, we will use it, why? To scam you, to whatever you do, to share it with third parties. And then, then it's when, when you, you can say no. Mm. And legally, there's no way I should uh, share this information. But then it's like, uh, it's changing. There are new projects, actually, that there are um, social media sites uh, like Decentralized. You can build a Twitter that's not centralized, that's completely decentralized. There's people building that already. They've been building for, for a month. So there's new Reddit, there's new Facebook, there's new kind of companies where they don't keep your information. Most of the projects we're building, one of the things that everybody wants to be sure is that nobody keeps information. And that's for the GDPR, by the way. It's because it's not legal to do that. And, and, it, and it's up to you. As I say, like, uh, do you want to be your own bank? Then the, probably the, the answer has to be yes. And then you need to educate yourself and say, OK, uh, maybe Facebook is not the perfect place to be. Maybe Google is useful for this, but not for everything. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I have to change a little bit my, my habits. Great. Next one, with it. Hi, I'm Atman from Belgium. It's a bit crazy question. <laughs> so. Um, there is this ambition of each social network to create a unique identity, okay? And like uh, when you create a new service like a startup, uh, the easiest thing for to, to log in is like connect to Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn. And how do you see in the future with this like a unique service that in in that IDs you to the government, to your Facebook, and to your I mean, all other social networks and the artificial intelligence that uses Facebook to recognize each pattern or clicks, even when you don't even log in through Facebook. Good question. But th that should be quite difficult to do because in the kind of the centralized system, everything that happens, uh, it's, uh, it happens di directly through uh, safe channels. There's a thing, for example, Ethereum. Ethereum, everybody knows Ethereum, the blockchain. But probably most of the people, they don't know about Whisper. Whisper is the communications protocol underneath Ethereum. So basically, you can build safe peer-to-peer uh, -peer cha channels that uh, they are encrypted, by the way. So no way Facebook can take a look at what you're doing. There are new, uh, uh, new uh, 
it's not, I don't know, the, I don't remember, the, it's not uh, Firefox, it's not Chrome. There's a, a new browser that works with blockchain uh, where you can use these channels. All the, the, the trends, it's, it's uh, probably, I will get a little bit more techy right now, but the, the new trend is like using AWASM, so uh, uh, WebAssembler. Mm -hmm. Even Ethereum is migrating to WebAssembler. We are doing lately a lot of Assembler, by the way. So you can build this, uh, this uh, top layer application on top of the, of the browser to connect directly with all the services. So you can take out the power of, of Facebook, all the power that Facebook has over you. You can do it, but you have, you have to want it. Can we take the last question? Yeah. Yes, that one. Last question over there. It's the last question, no pressure. Everybody's waiting for the beers, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, kidding. Hi, I'm Felix, um, one of the Harvey Space students. And you mentioned earlier that for you, blockchain is mostly a special kind of data storage. So my question would be. It's uh, not a data storage. I will never store data on the blockchain. I store proofs, claims, okay. and, and processes, like states. It's mm -hmm. a, a state machine. Okay, yeah. Um, to, to what degree would you think you could realize the digital ID with uh, central authorities like governments being a trustworthy entity instead of blockchain? So with traditional centralized technologies? Well, there's a big debate about that, but the, the main thing is like they can work together. Like, like I, I say with a big, big companies and, and the community, they, want, they can work together. Here is exactly the same because if I build my own ID with the blockchain, I say me, it's me. Probably you would not believe me, but if it's the government verifying that I am me, once again the identity is mine. But then it's the government saying that I am me, and then we have just one ID. We don't have a tax number. We don't have a driver license. We don't have it's just one identity. We don't need all of those. Then I think they match at some point. So there's a lot of of, of collaboration between most of the cert digital certificate startups and uh, big companies and government that they can do. All right, thank you very much. Well, before you give the applause, don't give the applause, not now. He totally deserves it. But. So we're gonna move to the next room. There's beer and there's water, so some drinks, there's some food. We're gonna do networking there. Thank you all for coming. Don't, please don't pile up here. Alex is gonna come in a few minutes. We're going to unmic him. And I want to call all the people from Startup Brand to take the group picture. And I want also Cameron to come on stage with us because you brought this amazing group of uh, 50, 55 students for Harvard Space. Please, right now, if you can, stand up and give the warmest star applause to Alex. <laughs> <laughs>